if you're not careful, the end result can be a whole lot of disease and pests coming inside with you. Guten gardening, everybody. In this video, I'm gonna focus on how we were able to bring this outdoor green stock inside even after using it for an entire season outdoors. Now this is really important. I think just in general, if you're gonna be growing indoors, a lot of times you're gonna to wanna to bring some of the things that you use outdoors inside. And you have to be a little bit careful with that. I can tell you from experience, if you're not careful, the end result can be a whole lot of disease and pests coming inside with you. So I'm gonna talk about how we were able to bring this indoors and then talk a little bit about how we're planning to set it up this season. So if you've considered growing vertically indoors, say with a green stalk like this one, this should give you some ideas of what you can do. Now, also in this video, we have our fourth giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving. And so you're gonna see that at some point in this video. Now, before I get to all of that, I wanna say that this is an example of bringing plants indoors. These are herb pots that are a brand new addition to our indoor garden, but they've been growing outdoors for the last four plus months. And these containers have parsley, sage, thyme, Where's the rosemary, huh? <laughs> but we wanted to bring these inside, but because we needed to quarantine them for a while before we brought them down here, they've actually been in our upstairs living space. But now that we have these indoors and they're taking advantage of this really nice grow tent area here, I think they're going to be nice and productive for a long time for us. So this is an example of bringing some of our plants indoors. But again, we had to quarantine them for a couple of weeks just to make sure there weren't any pests or anything on these that were going to then spread to everything else we have down here. All right, let's get to our green stalk and how we brought it inside. The original footage for this was filmed a couple of weeks ago, so that's why it doesn't look so cold out. We have about a half a dozen green stalks outside right now, but we want to take one of these indoors to go ahead and grow some more because we keep our growing season going all winter long. And this is the one that we've chosen to bring indoors. Now, after a season of growing, things get a little bit dirty, a little bit messy. We don't want to bring in any kind of insects or pests like that. So what I need to do right now is get this one prepped for bringing it indoors. And that involves getting all this potting mix out of here and cleaning this up really nicely. It's a pretty simple process, but come along with me and I'll show you what I got to do. Two. Now, first and foremost, I'm just going to break this down. It's five layers because this is the original green stock series. Each layer has a nice catch tray underneath. So I'm going to separate the catch tray from each tier, just like so. See how easy this is to move around. I'd say filled with mix. Each of these is probably about 20 pounds, maybe, depending on the type of mix you have. Now we've already grown in this mix this season, so it needs to be fertilized and probably amended a little bit more. But we're not bringing this mix indoors. So I've got a couple of other containers here that I grow sweet potatoes in, etc., that can handle this extra mix. So I'm just going to add this where I need to fill up soil anyway, just like so. And then once these are empty, we'll get to cleaning. All right, there they are, I got them all emptied out. All five, you can see tons of soil, tons of dirt in here. You can see some of the, what looks like calcification here, some minerals. All right, there you go. You can see we've got them all emptied out. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take a hose to them and get that initial dirt sprayed off. And what's really cool is because of the setup of this type of planter, I can carry the entire thing all at once. Key is to find a nice spot that you don't mind getting a little bit dirty. All right, first and foremost, I'm gonna spray each of these tiers out. Just get the main bit of soil out. those don't look too bad after the initial spray now what i'm going to do is get in here with some detergent now i'm basically going to go through the same process with all these i've got some dish soap here and i'm going to use this and some water and this scrub brush to get in here and start scrubbing down these edges now when i get to spots that are a little bit too small maybe for the bristles then i'll come in with the toothbrush and clean those areas so i'm going to start with the dish soap and some water and then to really sanitize them, I've got some vinegar here. This is just some white vinegar. I'm gonna mix it with some water and I'm gonna do that second wash to get these, again, sterilized to make sure we're not bringing any disease inside. Grab a little bit of my soap and start scrubbing. All right, 
I think you can see the difference right there where I've scrubbed and where I haven't. And we want to scrub inside and outside as well. Now believe me when I say, and I can definitely speak from experience, the last thing you want to do is bring in disease or pests into your indoor garden. Much harder to deal with than it would be if you're outdoors. So we try our best to keep the outdoors separate from the indoors whenever possible. You see how clean these get though? It's super easy to get them clean. It takes a little bit of time, but I mean, this is looking great and I've still got to go in here and get the vinegar mix added too. So that, and now I got to take care of the outside. Well, I can definitely smell the vinegar on this one. I've got it all cleaned out. This is what we needed. Now I just have to let it dry out a little bit, but look how pretty that is. Inside and outside, it's nice and clean. Everything looks great. I've got four more to go. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video very briefly to show you who our day four giveaway winner is. So many of you commented on our most recent video and on our recent posts, and you've all been added into this giveaway. Let me show you what we're giving away today. Today's winner is extra lucky because we're giving away two prizes at once. This Govi Hygrometer Thermometer, which we actually use ourselves, and it's a smart thermometer hygrometer, which means you can connect it to your phone and track your temperatures remotely. And this Xlux soil moisture meter. So basically, we're giving you a great way to track your soil moisture and the humidity in the air, as well as the temperature in the air. All right, without any further ado, let's find out who wins today's two prize giveaway. Today's winner is Sheila Douglas. Congratulations, Sheila Douglas. Thank you so much for being a part of our community. Hey, let's all congratulate the winner down in the comments, but don't say her name so she can be surprised when she watches this video and finds out she's won. Congratulations again, Sheila, and thank you for being a part of our community. All right, let's have a look, see at how this actually turned out when I got it all cleaned up. You can see the inside here. I'll just pull this top piece off. The inside looks fantastic. And so we've got everything nice and sterilized, nice and clean. You know, there's some scuff marks on the outside, but really that's a little bit of nothing right there. Besides that, this came out so nicely and that's after growing in this green stock for two seasons already. Now we've already grown in our green stock indoors last season. We planted some sweet potatoes in there to experiment around to see what it would be like to grow sweet potatoes in a green stock indoors. But this season, I think we're more likely to grow more greens in here. Now, one thing's for sure, when we add our potting mix in here, we, we want a really nice well-draining mix. That's a key. At least we found that to be a key to our success with our green stocks. If you don't have a well-draining mix, the end result can really be problematic for your plants. And so we want a well-draining mix. And one other thing that we really want to keep in mind as we're laying this out, and we talked about this a little bit in our fall garden setup for our green stalk, but whatever we feed or water at the top is eventually going to make its way through toward the bottom. And so there are little holes in each of these tiers. Those little holes will let the water drip down. That's how this thing doesn't flood. You can water at the top. There's a middle pipe that allows the water to flow the whole way through to the bottom and go into each of the catch trays. But each of the tiers also have those holes in them. So that water, whatever's going through, in addition to the nutrients, has the ability to go through each of the tiers all the way to the bottom. So if you've got something that you don't want, say, a lot of nitrogen added to, you want to plant it toward the top because if you're feeding a lot of heavy nitrogen at the top that's eventually going to make its way down through the system so it makes sense to lay out your greens in such a way that you're not going to create a problem with excess nutrients for ones that don't need specific types of nutrients so keep that in mind as you're laying it out you know if we're talking about some heavy nitrogen feeders like our greens like our lettuce like our spinach we'll probably plant those closer to the bottom so we can be more specific and more targeted in our feeding. And then say we wanted to plant some root crops in here, like some beets or turnips or something like that. We would be more likely to plant those up toward the top. That way, if we're feeding the nitrogen at the lower levels here with the greens, 
we wouldn't have that same problem of the nitrogen then flowing into our root crops, which would create a whole bunch of leaves, but really wouldn't help us with root development. So if you can see my point, you wanna look at the needs of your plants and plan accordingly in terms of the nutrients that they're going to need, keeping in mind that that'll all flow through this process. I tell you what, growing indoors is a ton of fun. And really in our minds, there's not a lot of reason not to try bringing something like a green stalk inside. And cleaning it out, not all that difficult, but definitely a step you wanna take if you wanna prevent the spread of disease from outdoors. And definitely if you wanna keep those pests out of your indoor garden. Believe me, when you see an aphid infestation and those things, I don't know how they develop as quickly as they do. If you wanna see that kind of thing happen, then don't bother cleaning off, sterilizing, or quarantining what you bring inside. But if you wanna protect yourself from that in your indoor garden, make sure that you take care of getting this nice and cleaned out. Whatever it is you're bringing in, get it nice and decontaminated, sterile, and cleaned out as best as you can, and you're gonna be in for a much better time in your indoor garden. Well, congratulations once again to our day four giveaway winner. If you wanna be entered to win for our next drawing for day five, go ahead and comment on this video. We've also linked to the original video that gives a description of what we're doing, but we'd love to have you all here. It's been fantastic seeing all of your participation in our community. Well, if you enjoyed today's video and found it informative, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.